What up traders, what up investors, Ken here from Dyslexic Investor and thank you for joining for another wonderful stock talk during market hours. Again, we are currently at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the East Coast, uh, looking at some markets, looking at some charts. Uh, it's kind of been a kind of a crazy day, uh, kind of had a huge uptick in the overall market and then kind of just uh, around 11 o'clock in the, in the morning, uh, kind of giving some of that back because we were up uh, quite a bit uh, in the futures. Uh, let me go ahead and just get my charts ready while everyone comes out and joins the live stream. Let's see, got my charts going here. All right, let's see this. All righty. Let's see. It's quad witching this week. Is that what the, it's, it's, it's this week? It's on, it's probably Wednesday, Thursday. It's going to be happening. I mean, well, it happens on Friday, yes. But normally they get out of their positions on Wednesday or Thursday. So you see a pretty big downtick potentially. Another lockdown due to the virus. I, I, I read that too. The uh, uh, In Beijing they had some other things. I'm in college math class. Is everything online because of that? All right, what's up, guys? Okay, any particular tickers you want to look at, I'll do a quick market analysis here with the uh, S&P 500 or, or SPY. So initially, the uh, beginning of the week or Thursday, Friday of last week, we had that huge down gap, um, closing mostly down below the 21 here. That's the yellow line here. And then come Monday kind of had a reversal with Tuesday uh, being today gapping up quite a bit and getting pretty pretty high up here to around the 315 level again this is on SPY daily chart um, looking for a potential uh, breaking of this trend so we like to see the 5 and 8 uh, with the 5 and 8 being the more heavy used for momentum and short-term trading um, we're still above it um, I like, I li especially yesterday, I didn't know, uh, I wasn't even expecting this huge of a gap up. I was kind of guessing maybe looking at the 305 potentially, but getting all the way up to nearly three, almost 310, and then today breaking well past that level, which we were looking at, um, kind of breaking out from that. Um, if we go down to exactly what kind of happened today on just the, the ticks, you can kind of see here, huge pre-market stuff at around eight. Uh, then kind of in the market that sold off maybe like a 50% retracement then this is what we're talking about here we had this really quick downswing here um, uh, today in the market and then now it's kind of just been recovering uh, trying to uh, look at what exactly happened there um, people just kind of continue trading sideways and kind of seeing and waiting on what's happening again like uh, 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 the the quad or uh, witching which is uh, coming out this week on uh, Friday which means that so what the it's normally like uh, expiration uh, basically they have to move all the contracts uh, but it, everything is lined up between all the different futures in their contracts where they have to to move them at, um, to the following month and it just it happens four times a year uh, where these uh, basically get lined up and they have to move the contract. So there's a slight little bit of a uh, uh, selling pressure at times. So you s might see a potential pullback uh, Wednesday, Thursday, um, and that would be possibility of having a really good buying opportunity. Uh, let's see. I, I wanna, I'll, I'll Google that and confirm that for sure. Um, LLY ripped today. Uh, Eli Lilly, eh? I haven't traded that forever. Wow. What did they come out with? That's great. Whew. That's hot. That's, that's a nice looking chart there. That's on the monthly. Let's put this back to the daily. I've always been perusing around. Yeah, that's a huge gap up. That's like, that was going, was going negative, but then clearly some kind of catalyst here that knocked it up uh, a couple uh, points here basically what's it up 15% 21 bucks that is uh, 
that's a nice little move there. Let's look at a quick fib. Um, it, I wonder if it hit the 172. Yeah, no, the 127. So yeah, it didn't really stall out here. If, if it would have stalled out exactly around or within a couple pennies here, um, I could have seen this. Uh, for a potential pullback. Again, as long as it's staying above the 155, I think that could be a potential. Uh, again, this is just the technical analysis and how I would look at it. I don't know on what they came out with. Oops, I did that wrong. Uh, do, 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 create an alert below. Kind of need to stay above that line. Um, and again, the 160 as well um, with that tick there. But potentially seeing, again, this is an all-time high for it so yeah that is pretty phenomenal and it looks like it had a couple rough years in 19 and now it's kind of been trading fairly well uh, around the 21 exponential moving average going higher I should add it to a long term oh you're not in it oh <laughs> I thought you're in it uh, okay let's go at Russ uh, NCLH we can look at is that Norwegian? Norwegian. Wow, it's up 5% today. Nice. Okay. So, yeah, Norwegian, just like basically all the other cruise lines, are kind of trading in the same pattern. Um, I don't know the exact date. Uh, Russ, do you know when they're able to start sailing again and taking... I know they're offering some pretty lucrative uh, packages in the sense of... Um, booking in advance and things like that it could be a potential look in it. Um, Omar, yeah, we can look at AMD in a second. So with uh, Norwegian Cruise Line, the 21 is really the key, what I'm looking at here. As long as it stays above $18.30, $18, uh, and holds the 21. My only concern is that we could be just be trading sideways for a little bit because you have the parabolic SAR above. And the momentum in RSI has kind of been stagnant. Same with the volume oscillator. There's nothing indicating a potential higher movement or lower. It's just kind of, oh, they're doing it in August. Okay. So I think, uh, isn't it uh, CCL's having an earnings today or tomorrow? That's still on. Why is it still a question mark? That's weird. So I don't know why it's still a question mark. I uh, would probably need to Google that to confirm that date. Um, to figure out when they're reporting because that could that could kind of move the overall market within that. Uh, Omar, you want AMD? Yes, we can look at AMD. That was a, we're still in that one. It's kind of been really still trading sideways, uh, but it's not really breaking any of my rules in the sense of it's still above the 50. It literally came down, if you can see here, and touched the 50 with its little tail of the candle wick there. And it's really just been trading sideways. Um, the squeeze is still intact. Um, again, RSI is flat. Uh, volume oscillator is also flat. Um, but the parabolic SAR are below, so that's still meaning that it could get a potential uplift or a kick higher uh, in the movement and top of this really tight, uh, almost rubber bandish movement with all these moving averages so tightly stacked into each other that we could see an average uh, or I mean a, a, a kaboom uh, up or down to the fact of all these moving averages kind of coming in together getting tightly wound if you can imagine just taking a rubber band and just uh, uh, rotating it around to wind it up until it really gets so snappy uh, and it can just snap on you and that's what kind of was happening here lack of better words I did a horrible job explaining that um, but that being said, uh, that uh, is basically what I am playing myself for AMD is a potential move higher. You kind of see here my price target around initial is around 60. We've kind of tested this in the past a little bit, but lack of a better words, we have been in this trading range of literally this box for quite some time. By quite some time, I'm meaning well over a month and a half of just trading in this very tight range um, and just kind of waiting for uh, I honestly thought some of the stuff with around the PlayStation 5 would kind of help it get moving but I think there's going to be some other catalyst or something that I'm not seeing on the horizon because there is no earnings uh, for a while um, but if you bring this out to a like a weekly side 
it's been really holding the 21 fairly nice. So that's why I kind of have this the $50, $49 price if it goes lower. That's what I would uh, potentially like to see if it gets out, if it starts breaking below this level. That's where I have to start being concerned uh, with my overall position. I hope that was useful for you there, Omar. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Great dividend stock. I am. I wish I had added it more. Yeah, those uh, lovely uh, pharmaceutical companies do pay a nice dividend. Um, A Z A Z. Uh, look at oh Roku. Okay, we can look at Roku. Roku. So this is actually a position that uh, we were long as well, um, due to the overall stay at home pandemic and, and it was very great but once it starts breaking at this level like yeah I was gonna say 120 around this level uh, it's looking at it's just trading lower here um, with the 5 and 8 uh, going through the 21 um, and then seeing it kind of the 200 day not kind of coming in and then I start seeing it bounce above the 200 day this was kind of concerning um, because we got majority of the position out there then once it kind of did this, and once it kind of failed at the 200, we kind of got out of it. Um, and it didn't break above the 21. But now, that being said, I don't know what was announced today or what they came out with. Uh, what's up, Wesley? Um, that we could potentially see uh, um, something greater move. Again, there is a squeeze indicating here, which is a potential move higher. The TTM squeeze from John Carter. And then we also have the RSI kind of curling up, uh, the volume oscillator potentially curling up as well. We have the parabolic SAR below, which is a great sign. Potentially looking for some resistance around the 119 to 120 level, um, but this one has been performing very well. I'm not sure, again, uh, it looking like a potential, uh, uh, some news or something going on, because there hasn't been any earnings on this guy for a while, so uh, there's something that's been related to them signing a deal or partnering with someone uh, to potentially uh, get that huge move in the market with nearly 9%. Uh, that being said, that we kind of need to stay above the 200-day, uh, which is the uh, dotted or dashed teal line, and start seeing these move managers coming through. The 5 and 8 are trying to kind of break through the 21, which is also great, but usually with this large momentum, it kind of can be stagnant and just trading sideways for a little bit. Again, not sure why this moved up. I guess we can kind of hit on the news tab here and figure out uh, uh, fast ad recovery. The company announces a new ad targeting program. That's old. Uh, I'm not seeing anything on the, the. It looks like it's some options. There's a that was today that call sweep 64 near. This is a price target. Okay, that's interesting. Nothing like newsworthy doesn't look like uh, <laughs> what's up makeshift flair. Thanks everyone for joining again. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I like these little smaller sessions because the, the chat doesn't move so fast. So I can kind of keep up and actually uh, relay uh, everyone's comment. I don't miss anyone. I, uh, I'm not complaining that a lot of people show up for my stock market Sundays, but those are they move so fast sometimes and I, I lose and I feel bad that I don't cover some people's tickers um, do, do, do. so that is basically the look at Roku uh, what is this saying did the spy in the last four minutes has dropped 0.5 percent uh, I don't really am too concerned uh, about mm, looking at uh, the market on an intraday basis because I really don't trade too much uh, um, tr day trading stuff. I do more swing trading and long-term stuff. If I do trade trade, it's very small size and things like that. Um, what do you, let's, we can look at 15 minutes. Yeah, it looks like we could get a potential uh, sell-off again. Between the hours of 3 to 4, uh, and especially it's going to be the, the most volume. So you're going to start seeing a lot of volume coming in here. I would honestly like to, uh, I like this little bit, I like to take the contrarian bet and potentially play this 
a strong move into the close, um, but we could see some closing, yeah, start seeing the 5 and 8 crossing through the 21. Not really the greatest sign. It wasn't at the most steepest uh, drop off like you saw here, where you, the, the 5 and 8 are quite substantially above the yellow line, and they really cut into the 21, meeting a very a sudden drop. Um, that's the way the cons that's the, that could be concerning. This is just kind of some. Uh, well, th this from three o'clock or from eleven o'clock to three o'clock is just a lack of a butter but lack of a better word nonsense to me because there, there's not really that much trading activity going on there. It's just people kind of just twiddling their fingers and just waiting for um, the big boys to come in or the algorithms to kind of see what's happening and then the, the people react to it. I, I don't do good at reacting. I'm more uh, proactive than reactive so I kind of have my, my positions and uh, my trades set instead of uh, just trying to uh, react to exactly what's happening uh, in the intraday uh, market. It doesn't work with my personality type and uh, it just moves too fast and uh, I don't do well with that. Yeah, so that's basically looking at that, looking at the uh, potential. Uh, we could see going down to 3091 potentially. That could be pretty swing. Let me look at this. Fibonacci swing high to swing low here. Oh, not clicking. There we go. So you kind of fit, look at the like, kind of failed here multiple times, uh, closing a couple times above it. Again, it's very difficult to do a lot of technical analysis because, again, it's going to be very much driven to a lot of different things. You can do support and resistance bands and things like that on an intraday. Um, but for me, again, it's very hard for me to do this because, again, I, I work and I have to, I can't uh, spend uh, eight hours just staring at a chart. I, I just, it would kind of hurt my eyes, too. <laughs> I, did, I did that in the past. I'm, I'm done with those days. Let's see here. Feds are trying to stop dividend payments and will announce it by the funny foods if they are. Oh, what does that mean? Actually, it looks like this is going to be going a little bit further south because now we see two blue. Let me actually bring it down to a five minute chart to give us a little bit of perspective. Okay. Yeah, so the squeeze has fired short on the five minute chart meaning that this red could last for three or four more uh, time stamps or another <clears throat> 25 to yeah, 25 to 20 minutes potentially into the close again we only have uh, less than 45 minutes here into the close so we could be seeing a tick down here potentially even to uh, we could do this real fast to kind of give you a better perspective on how we could look at this. So we could look at basically a 50% retracement of that. So around 3083, we could look for that there um, for a potential downtick to that level um, or even the 3072. So these could be some levels. Again, these are the futures markets. So we could be seeing um, that overall downtick in the market because again, being short term, this is again a five minute chart. So it's going to be very reactive. Um, with the 5 and 8 crossing through the 21, kind of breaking through the 200-day uh, exponential moving average, just kind of trending lower. Uh, the squeeze just fired. The RSI could potentially uh, create uh, an oversold uh, symbol here, um, a calm before the storm. I don't know, maybe. Like, we'll see what happens. Um, I, I, I guess I didn't read about that dividend stuff. What do you mean? I guess uh, I need to figure out an article to read or to look into that. I, I guess it didn't come across my table today. I actually uh, I've been wor I'm working on, on a Nikola video. That's uh, something that we uh, kind of discussed about uh, a little bit. Let's see here. Like Double check here. Yeah, it looks like, uh, again, some selling pressure coming in because you can see that volume again. Um, I uh, do, 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 do. Uh, you oh yeah I'm not gonna even look at that ticker symbol if it goes from one dollars per share to 25 is the time to short I don't know 
But we can take a look. I'm most likely going to say that's a no Ghost Rider. Was it the U1? Yeah, that's the. Uh, you don't want to stand in front of that train. I, I don't want to be. I have no idea what this company does. No idea. Again, I'm pretty sure there's been about 50,000 other people who try to short this um, yesterday. And of course, that just ignited to the next fuel. And that fuel just literally took it up tenfold. Like, like the volume on this just looks absolutely insane. Yeah. Look at the, the, the average volume is not even shown on the graph here because it's so little. We're talking... 24 million that day and then nearly 40 million this following day. This could easily go up uh, exponentially um, To give you a better insight of that. That's the look at the standard deviation channels. It's way past it This is a stock. I wouldn't want to touch with a 10-foot pole uh, do, 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 do. I'm shorting JPM JP Morgan. Let's look at that. Interesting. So, yeah, I would be very mindful of that 200-day exponential moving average around 108, 109. Um, we are seeing some very uh, stagnant trading sideways mentality with the RSI and the volume oscillator. The momentum has been dragging down. The parabolic SAR are still uh, above, which is a sign of momentum pushing lower. Uh, just be mindful of the 21. It's been around the $100 price target. Uh, kind of needs to close before, below that. But the thing that I see here with the short-term indication here around the 34 exponential moving average is a shown support here. So if you start seeing it trying to test below the 34, that could be an indication for a, a definitely uh, push lower with the momentum um, to get uh, to the 30 or 50 and below. Because again, this is going to be again driven to a lot about what is the overall narrative in the market? Um, our business is going to start failing because uh, they're not able to make their loans, uh, their mortgage payments, or their uh, debt payments, things like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just confu I'm confused on Jay Powell and why he's saying the dividend, because he's just saying. How can the government tell, uh, I guess, if you got money from the government, they can say that you can't use it to pay out to shareholders, maybe? I want to get into DocU, but uh, I think it's too overbought. Can you take a look when you have, would have a good entry? Yeah, DocU. That thing's had a rip. Oh, I did that wrong. Yeah, hitting an all-time high today. That's uh, it's good. it's gonna be difficult to get into that. Um, it's gonna take a lot of uh, potential uh, fortitude to get into this. Again, this is basically kind of like the Zoom story of everyone's like, wait a minute, I don't have to go to X Y Z mortgage broker or I have to go to sign these loan documents uh, about. Um, uh, to 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 be in the physical presence of a office to sign papers, I can do it all virtually now. This stuff has been around for years, but I think majority of the people have just now came to the light of what is the the technology and what's offered out there and how quick and easy it is to do. Because businesses still need to run and operate. So that being said, with DocU, this has just been a monster with really. If you ever get a pullback to the 21 um, newbie, <laughs> I'm not gonna call you newbie, uh, newbie uh, down to the 141 level, I know that seems really far off. We're talking about nearly uh, 25 bucks from the, what we're looking at now. But again, anything can happen. Um, I thought that I was gonna be able to get into Tesla again, but with the downturn in Tesla, I was able to get into around 350 again. So that being said, anything can happen um, unless they come out and say, oh, if you use DocU, you, you, your first child go, gets away. I don't know. You can just, <laughs> just make it up some terrible. Like, 
they're, they're oh, I don't know. I'm just making up something bit terrible news comes out, then you have to, of course, get out and they have some kind of like fraudulent uh, accounting or something like that. But if it's the story is still intact, if you want to do it long term, uh, the 21 is going to be your first incentive for long term. If you want to trade this sucker, uh, you're looking at basically around the 152 level. Um, because you can see here, it's a very highly momentum stock, so that kind of falls into the five and eight exponential moving averages there to kind of be trading in around that level. So hopefully that was helpful for you, my friend. Uh, Mohammed uh, N C H. No, we have not. say NC NCHL is that a US based company we're in the stock exchange I don't see that or you have the ticker wrong fire gamer flying gamer RMED is ready for RA medical systems it's a penny stock my friend I can't it's, it's, it's been it's literally trending lower Unless you know something of, but some news coming out, I can't recommend that. Sorry, my friend. Um, Rock, uh, are my AAL 20 calls going to print for next week? <laughs> it's like you're asking a crystal, crystal ball there, Rock. Um, $20. Okay. So $20 is basically where the 200-day is right now. Um, next week, that's going to be very short-term. So we can look here on what the movement is for... Um, next week so we're talking plus or minus 350 so 350 it's going to be on the very ish end around the $20 move of the standard deviation of what the market makers are saying so you're really buying the outskirts of it oh NCLH okay we can look at that in a second um, so if you're getting a profit until the beginning of the week I think with uh, quadruple witching coming into place we could be potentially seeing a downturn in the overall market uh, with some steep selling we kind of saw that initially this morning so something not what to call it a flash crash um, but something that gets uh, pulled down uh, pretty fast with AAL it has been performing fairly well it's been well above the 200 day exponential moving average and it's also been uh, closing above the five and eight exponential moving average for some high momentum. The only thing I'm seeing here is that the momentum has kind of been stagnant. We do still see the parabolic SARs dots below for a potential push higher, uh, but a push into 20 is going to be entailing uh, an overall market uh, push as well, uh, just being uh, to give it to the momentum to start having these print uh, the light colored teal to get that to back up to like the 200 day uh, exponential moving average. Oh, the cruise lines. Yeah, we kind of covered it, but I can cover it again since uh, more people have joined. Um, yeah, Norwegian Cruise Line. So with Norwegian Cruise Line, it has been performing fairly well. Again, it's up 4% today, which is quite phenomenal. Um, it's been holding the 21 exponential moving average quite, some, quite well. The only concern is that um, the volume oscillator and RSI is kind of been stagnant. We have the parabolic SAR uh, above. We kind of want those below. So we start to need to see the five and eight start breaking out, potentially getting above the 23 and a push to 25 and above to potentially see that $32 level. Again, I'm not sure how this is gonna work out. We talked about CCLs supposed to be reporting on Wednesday or Thursday. It's kind of, they got their question mark down here. We can take a quick look at that. Um, it's not confirmed or denied on when they're coming out, but they have a uh, er, potential earnings this week. So we'll see how that goes. Be mindful of that. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, Wesley, uh, I think FedEx got earnings coming up. Oh, did they? Ooh, yeah, this chart just sums it up. It's been trying to break above the 200 day for a year plus now. Looking at, look at this really uh, uh, target uh, here, just being well below 200 day 
uh, multiple times, failing at it nearly every single time, and kind of doing the same here. Uh, potentially, yeah, earnings is coming up the 30th, the 23rd. That's strange why they have two different dates. Okay, so it's saying the 30th, okay. So the 30th is coming out, I don't know why this says the 23rd, who knows. It's coming out in the near future. Um, this 200 day is gonna be a very uh, magnet-ish, or it's gonna be a positive or a negative for it, in the sense of it's gonna be uh, uh, going to be connected to it or it's going to be kind of be pushed away due to the fact of this 200 day has been a really big failure for it uh, for quite some time looking at it more on a weekly side of things this is kind of just tells you a story of it's just been a failing uh, stock price of just continuing going down um, so there's not that trend needs to kind of be broken within that Hopefully that helped you, Wesley. Um, Dave, E-R-X. Oh, it's a, a two-time share thing. Yeah, I don't, you're buying way out in 2022, $30 to $5. Okay, I, I see what you're doing. Like, I, I, I kind of understand that. So, for example, what is this? This is for energy. Um, don't know how this is funded, so zooming in here, if I can get, it's just kind of been failing for me, so I know it's in the energy section, and I kind of dabbled in one of these ETFs here, I have been playing, it's the same company that does it, but I'm looking at a financial ETF, and I bought 2022 options for this one. Uh, further out, but the, but this is, has been forming a little bit better than the energy section due to the fact of, uh, you're welcome Wesley, due to just the banking sector kind of growing and kind of changing in that sense. Um, looking again, I think I've bought up the 50 or $60 uh, call again. That was way out in 2022, so, and I bought that uh, weeks ago, weeks ago. When it was totally beaten down, actually, someone uh, pinged me about it. A close friend kind of just went in there to see what what could happen. It's actually up pretty nicely. Unless you know something about the energy sector, I don't know about. It just looks like that overall trend has already been down for me. Uh, the thirty-five call is somewhat more conservative in the sense of it kind of could potentially get a bounce, but it's just been somewhat stagnant. Even looking at it on the uh, weekly side. It's just been really just, there's no activity. There's a lot of volume, but it's not going anywhere. Like, what are these people doing here, right? Uh, will, tree, you willing to check out UVAVS? It's a penny stock. It's about 80 cents certain. There's some crazy news coming up. Yeah, sorry, tree, I'm not able to look at that penny stock just due to the fact that it's, um, I, most of the penny stocks are, I'm not saying they're manipulated, just saying that uh, it's just uh, too of a risky profile to me uh, to play those. Uh, there you're calling for a semi, semi black Monday falling quad witching. Yeah, I don't know how they can t tell you that, but uh, they can definitely say a lot of things. I don't really listen to the news, what they tell me. Can you s uh, scan to notice big buyers on option calls? You can, I don't know the direct way of how to do that. I, I am looking on how to build some more custom indicator, or not custom indicators, but custom watch list and indications for some of the Patreon folks. That's kind of a teaser. Uh, that's what happened last time. Yeah, I know I agree what happened last time in the sense of the quad witching. Like we said, normally the selling happens before the witching happens. Um, and that kind of lasts for two or three days. Again, if it happens on Wednesday, uh, it, you'll see that selling off into Friday and then it's kind of pick up, potentially. Uh, a Ron, <laughs> I'm just joking, a Aaron. Um, Tesla 2070 YOLO 420 calls. Do they even make those far out calls? I guess if it's that far out, if they do 2021. Well, 
I don't know if your nickname is uh, from ARK Investing. Again, they're still looking for that 6,000 pr uh, price target in two years or five years. So I have that alert all the way up there. So we'll see if we hit that 5,000 there. Um, let's see. What did you say? 1,420. Okay. Let's see if we can get some kind of indication on that. So swing high to swing low. So the 1350 is a potential level of interest within the Fibonacci retracements, and then the next level will be the what we're looking for is the 1135. Um, again, I'm also a long-term investor in Tesla. I think it's a great company. I think they're really trying to change the world. Uh, I, I would love for them to be at well over $1,400. Is it possible? Yes. Uh, so if you even look at the options chain, you said you bought 2021, so I'm guessing you probably bought the Jan, I'm not sure. Um, but we'll see on, the, so the movement is plus or minus $590. All right, so that is definitely within its overall projection of it being there. You said 1420, there isn't that much activity there, but yeah. The, the other investors will like some more rounder numbers. They're gonna like the 1500. They're gonna like the the 1250s. You're gonna see some activity on the 1300s, the 1100s, 1200s, and things like that. So be mindful of that. So I'm not gonna say no, um, but that's definitely a true gamble in the sense of uh, um, of looking at that. Um, yeah, sorry, Tree. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate. Uh, thank you for understanding. I know it's. Uh, it's just something I can't, uh, most, again, if you look at a lot of penny stocks, they're usually superly tightly wound and uh, with volume, different indication, things like that. You, it's very hard to do some technical analysis on it unless you have a full-on story of like, oh, I think this is going to be the company that's going to break through and do X, Y, Z. Um, let's see here. Uh, do, 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 hey man, stumbled upon your stream. Like your place, you earned my subscribe. Thank you, man. Looking forward to see you pop up in my feed. Awesome. Thank you. Do you? How long you been trading? Baron? Is that what I said wrong? Hey, can you check out G O L, please? Okay. What is this? In what area is it? Um, again, looking at this overall chart here, looking at the 200 day exponential moving average being uh, some overhead resistance uh, for a potential uh, stopping because it kind of stopped short of the 200 day here, um, but it's been holding the 21 very well. Again, I'm not sure what this company does, but it's the, the chart looks okay uh, if you're bullish, uh, potentially it holding it the around the 650 level to continue going higher. Um, nothing too crazy to report. It just kind of looked like it uh, had a nice little steam up with the overall market and now kind of came back a little bit, now just trading sideways to potentially get uh, enough steam and momentum to kick higher. Um, just be mindful of the, uh, uh, it's a Brazilian airline, okay. So the five and eight exponential moving average are uh, pretty tightly wound. So this could be just be trading sideways until we get some uh, bigger news coming out or more momentum uh, in the stock gets out. So mindful of it starts breaking below 650 on top of the five and eights are crossing through to that. Just be uh, be careful with that one. Oh, you've been trading since the full uh, crash? Okay, yeah, this is, it's a great time to learn. It's gonna be a very difficult time. Um, you'll learn a lot, especially with what's going on. I, I would recommend if you're completely new in the sense of just being, uh, observing things and really learning and writing about it in the sense of however you retain information, 
um, to better understand what happened is because this this is no one really that's been alive has been traded this kind of market in the sense of a, a mass virus breaking out and just shutting down the overall economy. So it's basically a lesson learned for everyone. So you're kind of on the same page with a lot of the huge hedge funds in the sense of like we've never had this scenario in our playbook and they're just scrounging through their strategies on figuring out what could happen and trying to uh, adjust their uh, formulas and their projections on companies due to this overall market downturn. Uh, Rock, do you think uh, buying Apple 400 call for January 21th is a smart move? Uh, I love Apple. Let's see. Yeah, Apple's yeah, 400. Like, that's. Yeah, that's. You know what to say. Like, I have no crystal ball, but uh, long term in Apple, uh, I'm bullish without a doubt. Uh, I think. They they just they got everything that everyone wants. They're very uh, uh, important in the market. They're in so many different ETFs. They're just a very well uh, they're a very well run company. They're they're expanding their ecosystem and so forth. The only thing here is currently it looks like we're potentially seeing like a double top here. It kind of needs to break about uh, break out from its previous high here. Um, but with the parabolic SAR above it, we could potentially see a price down to around 340 potentially. Um, again, the last month, even more than a month, uh, two months, that it's been trading between the 5 and 8 exponential moving average. So unless something, the narrative has changed or something like that, um, we could see a potential downturn to around 340 if things go sour. Um, which I kind of have an indication with the overall markets potentially uh, kind of with this which looking at here at the futures market um, with this huge tick up and now kind of just trading sideways uh, aka the kangaroo market which they call it in the sense of just uh, uh, the capitulation between the bulls and the bears just trying to fight and play that tightrope game okay I love Activision, yeah. A ATVI, that's the stock that we've owned for a little bit, and we actually got out of it on the high. Uh, for yeah, Apple overall is just going to be, a, it's you can definitely do it because, I, I don't know, I can't give you advice. I feel a little bit hesitant about it because I, I do like that play. Um, It's not it's not crazy priced. The spread's pretty tight. There's a lot of volume there, which is good. Um, I think that would be for me if I would do it. I would wait for the next downturn again because you have plenty of time on that on that call. Potentially, if it starts breaking to the 21 um, initially, unless the overall market is trying to go lower, uh, be very careful there. Um, uh, WRT, WRTC, I'll look at that. Um, entry you said it was at 313, 713. Um, it's right about here on this huge spike up. Um, I don't know what this company does, but there is a lot of overhead resistance around nine dollars and twenty-eight cents here. Um, with this parabolic SAR, uh, the volume oscillator is kind of going not negative, but it's curling down. RSI is kind of fanning off, but momentum is still there. We just would need some more volume to come in here potentially to see on what happened. It looks like this company had something announced here and it just took the stock uh, skyrocketed here um, if we look here from a previously swing high to low this is the Fibonacci retracement and look at that it failed exactly at the 78.4 percentile move so it really needs to break above this level uh, to really get um, 
out and moving and it starts closing below the 848 level potentially to the eight dollar level um, that's the 50 percentile move that could be potentially okay again I'm not a fan of doing these really aggressive swing trades so uh, my only advice would be as well is um, what was the initial plan when you got into the stock if you were looking for uh, 30 40 50 percent return and you already have that uh, I would get out or whatever your narrative was regarding that stock because again with this stock it looks like it's pretty highly uh, volatile um, without a doubt um, but the 21 has come in a little bit here to, for some moral support in the past Yeah, I, I to be quite so. I know you just stumbled upon the channel. I normally don't I don't play anything outside of the United States uh, in the sense of uh, a pure play into China or any other other markets. Uh, do, do, do. David says thoughts on Dave and Buster's. Yeah, what? Oh shoot, what did they? How did their quarter go? Oh, I forgot they reported the other day. Eh. They're up like I kind of had this. Uh, uh, oh, it's a law enforcement company. Oh, <laughs> so if you did so, it's a lot of law enforcement. So we actually shorted AAXN um, around a hundred. Uh, kind of beat me up a little bit, but once I had that that last down tick around ninety, we got out of it. Uh, I kind of wanted to be done with it um, because I don't see the uh, particular. Uh, um, onslaught of police needing and buying these devices like the taser things like that so uh, and I just didn't want to get political with it I just wanted to cut ties with it and just get out uh, yeah if you wanted to play more of the uh, other things I would rather look at a company like Activision Blizzard or like you already have that or even take two interactive because of course well uh, they should have been slammed for their Rockstar trailer it was everyone thought it was gonna be a new Rockstar game but it was a, a remake I don't even know what they're talking about uh, do, 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 oh let's go back to play sorry I got sidetracked all right, so play. I had this little box around it, kind of trading in around this. So for play, um, what is it down a little bit today? Um, with the parabolic SR above here, looking for potential support around 1550. Again, that's where the 21 um, that uh, could see a potential downtick to the 1550 if that support comes in there. Um, looking at a very short term. Fibonacci thing. Yeah, so it looks like it failed exactly at the 50 percentile move today and kind of sold off. Again, the 5 and 8 moving averages are still somewhat stagnant. They're not moving up or down. So once you start curling up or down, depending on what you're positioning or what you're looking at here, um, who was this? David? Yeah, David uh, potentially could see a play here. Um, would need to kind of see a break above again that 18 to 19 dollar level um, with momentum kind of going lower volume is somewhat stagnant the same with volume oscillator and RSI uh, on a weekly side it needs to break above this $20 level to potentially start seeing some more activity again that's on the long term side of things uh, do, 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 do. Uh, can I get your uh, opinion in IBR? A lot of people love this. So this thing comes up quite a bit. Um, this is a play for, I believe, some capital markets. I think Ryan uh, is in this. Uh, potentially, it's just been trading sideways. Again, I'm not 100% what the company does. Uh, but with earnings on the horizon, just be very careful. Uh, with that, we could potentially see uh, with earnings is for me it's a coin flip because uh, the CEO or the 
uh, executives can say a certain narrative, but if that doesn't jive well with what Wall Street expects, it just can be a pretty big catastrophe. Um, again, that being said, the 5 and 8 exponential moving average has been holding fairly well. Uh, the 21 is seems like it's kind of a somewhat a support if it gets down to the $4 levels. Potentially, if you're not in it, get a little bit of a nibble. Um, but with the 5 and 8 uh, really kind of holding it tight uh, with the parabolic SAR below it, looks like uh, if you're in it, uh, things are just looking like it's to be trading sideways. Just be mindful of that earnings on the horizon to be careful of that. You're very welcome, my friend. Uh, I got calls for play until January 2020. Oh, you do, Wesley. Got in at nine and change. Hey. What are those even going for that that's far out? So play is the, the Dave and Buster's is the sense of you're hoping that it doesn't go out of business. Are they even open? Like, how are they able to do? Um, I'm not sure there's even one near me. Um, I haven't seen one. I know Chuck E. Cheese is saying that they're going to be going under potentially. And then 24 Hour Fitness is closing 120 of their stores and restructuring their stuff. Um, so you bought it at 9. That's not bad. Uh, let's see here. Probably some super cheap stuff here if I got them at. Yeah. That's a, that's the, that's a worthy bet. Just be mindful. Of hopefully it doesn't go bankrupt or has to get restructured. Guys, I got any more stock symbols out there? If not, we're going to be calling it a day again. Thank you, everyone, for showing up for a wonderful uh, live stream for stock market, uh, the hour of the last hour of the day. Don't know what I'm trying to say there. Um, clearly, uh, we're trying to kind of capitulate between some prices here. Um, we did, let's look at that stock chart here we kind of did some early predictions at the beginning of the the chat here um, we were looking for 3084 we're still kind of grinding lower between that you kind of see the parabolic SAR kind of coming in for some support here uh, potentially could see a small flush into the close again we have eight minutes left of the uh... <laughs> that's funny Kathy Kathy Woods and ARK Investing, I think they're extremely optimistic. I think they're extremely optimistic. I appreciate their knowledge and their uh, op or their ideas of what they're investing in, um, but I think they're very optimistic. It's very hard to project out five years. Because again, I don't know if you join, because of when I each time we look at Tesla, they say Tesla's going to hit $6,000 in five years. I don't know how you can say that, but they must have that crystal ball I've been looking for. Um, what do you think is stronger? Oh, thoughts on I did that. Okay. You're welcome, uh, makeshift player. Uh, thank you for again for joining. Uh, what do you think is stronger, CCL, ours, Royal Caribbean, or uh, Norwegian? I don't know. I, on the chart side, uh, Royal Caribbean was performing slightly better, um, but again, it's all going to come down to what their debt structures is. Um, and again, I don't know enough about each of their business models on who has a better competitive advantage. Looking strictly at the charts, um, we can look here, go back to daily. So we did a video about CCL, about some huge... Stuff going on. All the charts look the same like this, where it kind of pops up, goes lower, and things like that. I think they're all, lack of the better words, uh, AA Ron, that their base will be, oh, that was a joke, sorry, Aaron. Uh, if you get that too much on a daily basis, I apologize, Aaron. Um, that you just have a, they're just kind of trading as an ETF right now. There isn't just one that's able to outperform the other, because again, they're all in the same boat, they're all closed, and they can't set sail till then. So my only concern is that uh, Carnival Cruise Lines has earnings coming out, and this is one of the earnings that, since Norwegian and I believe Royal Caribbean have already announced, um, yeah, previously.
yeah, previously, um, and kind of uh, Royal Caribbean has kind of they er, they basically posted right before the overall downturn, but again they got hit hard due to the fact of um, having people with the virus on board. Okay, you think it's funny? Okay, I didn't want to make you feel teased or anything. Um, uh, do, 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 do. I love Square and IL and then too as well. Uh, they just have Kathy here on CBC because she's always over overwhelmingly optimistic. Yes, uh, yeah, she was okay. So she is a very optimistic person, and I'm more of a I'm becoming more optimistic, but I'm kind of a devil's uh, advocate at times. Uh, I really like HXL. It's an airline parts company that's got hit by it. I think it could bounce back, especially with the new 737 Wesley. Uh, oh, I think you think uh, it's, it's pricing for a mega loss. Hmm, we'll see. Uh, Wesley H X L. Do you work in the airline industry, Wesley? I don't know anything about the airline uh, parts business. I, I understand that this is for sure got hit. I know this is looks very similar to the BA charting. So if we look at this chart and then we look at BA, it looks the chart looks exactly the same from pop up kind of came down to 21 not popping off so if you didn't want to pay $200 for a stock you can do what Wesley's doing and kind of play this market if it's really as you say tied to the overall airline industry um, you're basically getting it for 75% uh, uh, less Our airlines cutting pay and people after September uh, CARES Act easy profit. Um, what do you are you shorting the airlines then, or are they just going to be able to meet capacity? Because I've seen the drone videos and the flyovers of just so many Delta Airline uh, just being parked to the side uh, of just like no one, um, no one's there. They they're just collecting dust, lack of better words. Got a couple of minutes left here in the market. Kind of got a little pop off here. We kind of moved a little bit higher. Let's see. Yeah, looks like we're really holding that parabolic SAR potentially for um, trying to break the, uh, again, with extended hours coming out. Uh, oh, okay, that's good. I never like to see uh, uh, people get fired over things like that because it's not nothing they could do. It's out of their control completely. That's great to hear. Oh, 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 Jim, like in Jim Cramer, no Wesley. Oh, Delta doesn't have a union. That's interesting. I didn't know that. DS? Never heard of that. The next, uh, supposed to be the next Top Golf. I love Top Golf. Drive Shack. I've never heard of that. What is this? What is a drive? I have to Google this now, dude. You got my, you got my attention. I, I flippin' love Top Golf. Drive Shack. Um, it's like it, it looks like just like Top Golf. I see what you're saying. So there's one in Richmond. Well, I live in Virginia, but I'm not live near Richmond. West Palm Beach, Raleigh, and Orlando. Interesting. They're just like using the same technology. Who's funding them?
That's interesting. Like, the, th the only thing is, is like, when you say that, I look here on the weekly sign, it looks like it, oh, there's the market close. It looks like it kind of had the overall rally. Um, again, this is in 18, and then 19 has been trading sideways, of course, with the overall pandemic kind of kicking in. Just got hit in the head. Um, potentially looking for potential prices to get up to around 3 or $4. Dollars. So, uh, if this was like a newer IPO, this could be popping off, but even with their lack data in the past on the weekly side, it just hasn't been performing that well. So, um, even with this overall uh, virus over their heads, um, hopefully they can get back to 3 or $4 and not, uh, this could be this could be a little bit of a risky play for me. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, I like uh, any more tickers. I'm gonna call out a day. I gotta get some stuff ready for this evening for the kiddo and everything. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, they're not annoying questions. It's just some people. I know. I know an individual who trades penny stocks so flipping well and he is just uh, literally so fast on the keyboard and he just is has macro set up and he's just totally driven to trade penny stocks and he is a master at it and he makes buku money doing it but that's what he does he can't if he starts looking at blue chips his personality doesn't work with it he needs to be very interactive and trading literally the first 30 minutes, the first hour of the day, and that's all he does. Um, what I do is I do the daily side of the chart, so I don't have to look at the screen constantly. My, my bets are kind of wagered out over longer periods of time. So. You're very welcome. Yeah, uh, tree. Just be very mindful that, I'm not saying that you don't have a great strategy, things like that. But it's kind of been a super recovery market. If I just held certain other key stocks, I could have easily made uh, those same percentages as well. Just be very careful out there, particularly with penny stocks, because those can turn on you quite fast. You're welcome, my friend. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Um, oh, makeshift. T L R D. What is T L R D? Yeah, it's a penny stock. Now, this you can just see the downtrend here. Of course, something can come out and says uh, T L R D is coming out with uh, shoes that uh, can make you jump ten percent higher, and then boom, like there. Guys, thank you so much. We're going to be ending it here. Uh, I do have a video going live, I believe, in an hour, looking at some uh, the Nikola Motors stuff, some interesting stuff linked in there regarding some the CEO just talking to CNBC, and then these two guys talking about uh, how hydrogen fuel cells work. So definitely check that out. It's probably going to go be going live in a little bit. Guys, thank you so much. I'm going to be ending it here. I'll uh, do probably another stream end of the week or something like that uh, to kind of do some recap of how the week goes and of course we're going to have the traditional live stream on Sundays. Again guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, down in the description below we have the, you can join the Discord for free. Also got a Patreon page if you want to help support there. Uh, really appreciate it guys. Guys, take it easy, stay safe, and enjoy the sunshine. Peace.